Welcome everyone. This is Design 105. I'm so glad to have you here, whether you're visiting um, live or you're watching the recording. Um, I was just posing the question, how did assignment one go? How did the assessment one go? I, I, I spent quite a few, um, I spent a lot of time trying to give some feedback and I know with the first assignment, things, the grade might be a little shocker, um, but I try to get out as much feedback as possible and try to show you where we need to improve for the upcoming assignments. And usually the first assignment is rough, uh, kind of slow going anyways. It's a little rough, but I thought overall you guys did a very impressive job. InDesign is not an easy program to work with or to learn, and I feel like you guys picked it up really fast. Okay, so Simon, I'll just read off the questions that are coming in. The main question that Simon has is how to create a package properly. Yes. Okay, you're not alone, Simon. A lot of people had the same question. Um, I will show you. It wasn't so much that it, um, well, yeah, it, it was a, the assignments also kind of test how well you can follow directions or how you can try to pay attention to instructions. And I know that we're, when we're finished with our assignment, we just try to package it up really quickly and try to get it uh, uploaded, but it does matter. Um, so I will show you, we'll go over that. And then um, Sonia said, uh, went well, but can't believe turned in the wrong, oh, wrong. Yeah, um, so Sonia, and I'm sure many of you might have made this mistake. This is an InDesign class, so we want to make sure, as much as a fan as I am of Illustrator, I love Illustrator, don't get me wrong, Sonia, um, I think it's wonderful, but we're trying to learn InDesign, so unfortunately all the assignments have to be done in InDesign, and I know maybe one or two of you also have that same problem, so you're not alone, um, but we do need to make sure the work is done in InDesign, unless it's otherwise otherwise says so, but I believe, I went and checked all the assignments and this is all supposed to be done in, in, in design. Now, um, granted, ad designs should be done in Illustrator. I think that you can do some really good stuff with Illustrator, it's more ad design friendly, but when it comes to laying out pages, page layout, that sort of thing, like the smoothie page, totally has to be done in design. But for this class, we don't get to choose, it's just kind of, it's just laid out for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Sonia. No problem. Yeah, and sometimes it's confusing because some of us are pretty comfortable with all the, the programs, software, InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop. So we're kind of toggling back and forth and we can forget. It's an easy mistake. It's not a problem. Just want to make sure that moving forward, we, we are in this, we're designing in the program that we're supposed to be in. Joshua says, I think you did something wrong by putting the PDF in the zip. Yeah, so. <laughs> we'll talk about that. I wrote some things down here and we're going to go over them from assignment one just so that we know. I did want to throw it out here. And let me share my screen so you're not looking at a black screen. Um, I sometimes forget to pull stuff up. And yep, okay. So no black screen. Black screen's gone. You get to look at this lovely cover, cover slide of mine. Okay. So here's the thing. There's a few things that I wrote down. If you have other questions, we'll go over them. Uh, first thing is how to do a proper zip file, okay? Second thing, ads. We want them to be on separate pages, and I, I do take partial responsibility for that. We don't have time to go over every little detail. Um, this was one thing that we didn't go over, uh, I believe. Well, we might have, we might have. Um, but for the ads, we do need to have them on separate pages. I know some of you had it on one page, and unfortunately, we have to have separate artboards for them. And then uh, the other thing was talking about InDesign only. All the, all the, all the projects need to be done in InDesign only. And then we w I wanted to talk about timing. I saw a few of you, as I was grading on Sunday evening, uh, a few of the assignments got uploaded Sunday evening, um, Sunday morning, um, uh, Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time is the deadline, and I am a strict, I am strict with the deadlines because I'm held to college policy. I can't, I can't um, change that at all. Um, so, so some of the assignments got turned in at 12.02 a.m., and granted, it's like a three-minute difference, um, per college policy, and I can't change that, I do have to deduct late points. So yes, every minute does count. So please give yourself time. I know on Saturday night, everyone and their dog on campus is trying to upload everything, and it slows the internet down, or things crash, or files get jumbled, and it just takes forever to upload. So 
I just give your, yeah, if you, <laughs> the upload times are ridiculously long. So try to get it in even an hour or two before and you'll save yourself a headache. I recommend getting in a couple hours, you know, before the evening time hits and you should be okay. So just, just make sure you're aware of that because I, I was forgiving for this first round because I know this is a beginner's course. We're still trying to get used to the software and the programs and everything. Um, and how the class is structured, but moving forward, I can't be lenient, even if it's a minute or two minutes, because I'm held, I'm held responsible for it. So, because uh, instructors get graded too, so I've got to stick to the rules. So, um, I don't mean to be nitpicky, but that's just kind of what they're requiring of me to require of you. So, just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, and sometimes Simon's saying maintenance can happen on Saturday, Saturday night or the night before. So. Just make sure that you, I would avoid evening uploads altogether because it's usually when everyone's doing it, but um, if you can, just give yourself a couple hours so that if it does take forever, at least your assignment gets it on time. Okay, that was the last thing. And then last thing I wanna talk about with the hearts. Okay, now those of you who weren't here during the open session, we did talk about how to do hearts, uh, place the hearts. Now I will review that with you guys so you know how to do it. I think it's important to know about glyphs. Um, I appreciate those of you who, who tried to do it freestyle. I just, this is an easier way. Now, I didn't deduct any points from your assignments uh, due to hearts. If you were missing hearts or if your hearts weren't exactly perfect or if they weren't done correctly, I didn't deduct points for that. I was very forgiving on that, on that point. If you did get points deducted, it was usually because um, something was missed in the instructions or something wasn't done correctly or something was left off, but I didn't deduct for the heart. So, um, but I will show you guys how to do that. Okay, so let's see. Any other questions of something you want to know how to do? We've got the zip file, ads on separate pages, and then hearts. Anything else? I want to throw out there tomorrow, I sent an email about this. Um, I noticed that some of you kind of struggled getting the grade that you wanted to get. Maybe some of you were a little disappointed when you saw points deducted. Um, I don't normally do this because it's, um, it's very hard to keep track of. 30 plus students and, and uh, re-uploads and resubmissions, but this first go around, I am going to give you guys a chance to make up some points. You may not be able to make up all of them, but you can make up some points. So look at your feedback, apply the comments that I made, and then bring your assignment in on Tuesday and um, I will review it and I can change your grade on the spot. So um, I'm opening that option to you guys to get some points back on your assignment. Also, if for some, and, and, and this doesn't, you can't just email me or say, I resubmitted. I have to talk to you or physically look at your assignment and make sure, because I don't have the time, unfortunately, because I'm going to be grading week two work to go over and go back to everyone's week one work. So if you're coming in on the open lab session, I can set time aside to do that. So um, do that. Now, if you're saying, well, life happens, I, your scheduling conflicts with what I've got going on. Okay, if you can't, Try your very best to make it, but if you can't, I will accept going to the tutoring center and having them um, review the feedback that I gave, having them look at the uh, final assignment, and then you can resubmit to me. Um, I won't change the grade unless they email me. The tutoring center is very good at sending me updates whenever a student goes in and tells me exactly what was reviewed. So they'll give me the notes, but I just need you to actually go there. So I would prefer the open lab session because I could do it on the spot. If you do the tutoring session, you're going to have to wait till the end of next week. Um, and I don't recommend doing that. So fair enough. Is everyone okay with that? Okay, cool. All right. So that's an option. Uh, let's get started real quick. Uh, first things first, let's talk about uh, week two is going to be on typography. Uh, I'm not going to get into the discussion. That's pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure you post before Wednesday night so you can get you don't get all uh, some points docked. And then make sure you're participating. I saw some people are only participating two days a week. Technically, I'm looking for three days a week minimum. Um, but because it doesn't specify in the syllabus, I will just suggest to you, like I, if I made a comment in your discussion rubric, uh, please be active frequently during the week. I'm going to start holding you guys to that because that shows me attendance. So I want to make sure you're actively engaged in the discussion. Um, but I really did enjoy reading what you guys had to say for our discussion, uh, discussion one. Hey, Pablo, thanks for coming. Okay, let's talk about the assessment quizzes, or, or not the assessment quizzes, but the uh, daily checkpoint quizzes. I'll change that. 
So some of your quizzes, um, one, one of the first questions for Monday was an empty frame has what inside of it? Um, now it's an X. So if you, right. So if you've noticed, if you've placed a rectangle frame, now a rectangle frame is different than a rectangle, the shape. A uh, rectangle frame is usually a placeholder if you work in the newspaper industry or a magazine industry. Sometimes photographers are still um, on the beat trying to get the photos and then they've got the designers back in the office laying out everything, but because they don't have the photography yet, they just have to put placeholders. You'll see that used a lot if you get into the industry a little bit more. So X is the answer. Um, it has an X inside of it. Good job, Simon. Next question, tomorrow's daily checkpoint. How many years may um, my P MPN be good for? Now, again, these are about loans and student financial help. Um, again, just read the paragraph, but the answer is 10. And then the next one is similar. Graduate professional students are eligible for subsidized loans. The answer is false. And if you want to know more, please read the paragraph under a Wednesday's daily checkpoint. Thursday's daily checkpoint, selecting the type tool and then clicking and dragging will automatically what? Can't see my, my screen. Let's see, can everyone see my screen or is it just Simon? Can anyone see my screen? Becky can see it? Okay, Simon, I'm not sure, maybe you wanna sign out, sign back in or I'm not sure. Seems like everyone else can see it. Oh, it's minimized. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, select text. Good text. Good job, Pablo. The answer is it creates a new text frame. So it allows you to select text. It allows you to draw a text box. That's what we're doing here. So take a screenshot. Uh, go back and watch the recording. These answers should help you throughout the daily checkpoints. Uh, again, I like to reward the students who have come and participate, and here you go. Now the rest are, you're on your own, but if you do more than four or get more than four right, the rest is extra credit. So remember, just keep up with them, okay? Let's talk about text. There's a lot of different text, a lot of different things, and I'm gonna pull up InDesign before I get into our lecture. And we're gonna be working with InDesign quite a bit. Let's see, let's do a new share, just top. Thanks, Kat. No problem. Just join us when you can. Uh, let's pull up InDesign. Here we go. Let's talk about uh, first assignment one stuff, and then we will get into our lecture for today. So I'm just going to, I don't really know what to do with this chat box. It's kind of here, so I'll just put it up in the corner. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see my InDesign. Can everyone pull up InDesign, please? Give me a thumbs up, smiley face, if you've got yours up and ready to go. So, Oh, we can't see on one screen. Okay, I think we tried to troubleshoot this last time. If you can hit escape, okay? If you hit escape, it should minimize the Zoom screen and allow you to pull up another window. Does that work? Okay, if InDesign is up, it doesn't work? Okay, well, that's fine. I'll, I'll make sure to go extra slow. No problem, just trying to help. <laughs> I know it's a little annoying. They should make it so that we can have um, Two screens up. Okay, good. So it looks like everyone's got InDesign. So first things first, um, let's do add on separate pages. Okay, so when you create a new document, you go to File, New, Document, and follow along with me if you can. I forget the width and height of the ads. Um, we'll just do, uh, let's see, four by, oops, we'll do four inches by six inches. There we go. I'm just making a value up, okay? So as you're creating a new document, you're going to want this preview box checked because this allows you to see that everything is um, coming together the way that you want. And then you want to have the orientation, landscape or portrait. You want deselecting facing pages when you're doing an ad design. Deselect it, okay? I don't want that checked. 
and then number of pages. This is where you'll specify if you're doing two ads. That was another thing. A lot of you guys missed the fact that we do, we're doing two ad designs. I only had time to go over one ad design in class, but there were two were required, unfortunately. So number of pages, two, and hit OK. And what that does is it allows you two pages, two separate pages to design on. Is that clear? Does that make sense? Now, if you're designing uh, with the upcoming assignment, you're going to be doing a CD cover. In that case, because we're doing a CD cover that folds open, we're going to, you know what, Simon, I don't have the exact width and height. I just made one up. I did four by six. I'm sure that that's not correct, but I'm just showing you how to include two separate or multiple artboards in one in one frame. Now for the InDesign, it doesn't say in the assignment, it should, shall we pull it up? Right, let's do a stop share for a minute. Oh, it told us what the ad sizes were under the assessment. Thanks, Sonia. Yeah, it's, well, the assignment is eight and a half by 11, but the assessment for the ads are, yeah, so are you referring to the assessment, the newsletter ads? Yeah, it says, We're not doing the assignment just yet. I'm, I'm just going over some things from assignment one. I'm just showing you how to create multiple pages. These are some problems that some students were having. So we're just going over, we're just going over everything. Okay, so, so that's how you create multiple pages. Is that clear, how to do multiple pages? If you're doing ads, you want them to be separate. So remember, number of pages is the key. You can say two, three, 23, it doesn't matter, and they'll be, they'll be one after the other. If you have spacing pages selected, so in this case, um, for the assignment, we'll come back and do this for the assignment, but I'm just gonna show you, um, if, we're, if you want something, if you're designing something with multi, multiple pages, like pamphlets, brochures, magazines, newspaper articles, anything that has more than one or two pages, you're definitely gonna want to make sure facing pages is selected, and I'll show you what that does. It's a different view. So we get my pages icon up. Okay, so when I add pages, they're going side by side, right? That's facing pages. That's what facing pages means. They're side by side, they're facing each other. Now, if I just wanted to set this up for an ad design, if I just need one or two pages, you can deselect them. And this is the way it will display. So if I add a page, they're now one after the other. Like a book, exactly. So anything with, just think like a book, anything that's multiple pages, a brochure, um, a book, a newspaper, a magazine, a flyer, or, or pamphlets, you've seen those trifold pamphlets. Um, anything that has multiple pages, you'll definitely want selecting pages checked. If you just need the artboards, deselect the facing pages. Now, for the CD cover, what do you think you'll need to do? You'll probably need to select facing pages, right? You want that box checked. For the ads, you want it unchecked. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. If anyone needs me to review that again, I'd be happy to. Okay, let's talk about the hearts real quick. I don't have time to go over the entire ad design, but what I'm gonna do is show you. So you'll wanna grab your type tool, and this is how you do the hearts. You grab your type tool, you go up to type. Make sure your cursor is blinking in your text box. That means it's ready to go. Click on type, go all the way down the drop-down menu to glyphs, right here at the top. What this does is it brings a glyphs dialog box up, and I'll 
bring it down so you can see. Now within each font family, there are different symbols or characters that um, are hidden to us, but there are options for us to include. The way you, you add a glyph is by double clicking on, on the character that you would like. Yeah, actually, Simon, you can do Times New Roman, um, but to avoid the resizing, you could just go to the font, it's Zap Dingpads. You change the font right down here at the bottom left, and this is the heart that you want. It's right up here, here at the top. Does everyone see that? So if you double click the heart, it now inserts it. Now it acts just like a font, so you can give it a size. You can enlarge it, just like that. Oh, Times New Roman, just, I didn't even know Times New Roman had a heart. Let's see. See, I don't even see one on my options. Oh, you know what? There it is. It looks like it's the same one, too. Okay, well, that's good to know. Perfect. Yeah, they're identical. So, so Simon, um, thank you for suggesting that. Simon said that Times New Roman font also has a heart in the, uh, in the glyphs option. So this should save you time. You don't need to design hearts. There is a way to do that, but this, that would be for a more advanced class. For this one, we just want to make sure we can, we can navigate with text and characters. Now, once you have the hearts placed, um, yet yeah, you can either copy and paste your hearts. Once you have them placed, go to type, create outlines. And what this does is it now outlines each heart and you can edit each heart if you want, um, but this treats them as actual vectors instead of a text or instead of a font. Um, that stuff isn't necessary but it is helpful because as you move it forward in the design process, you'll be um, working with vectors a lot and creating outlines is, is very um, common in ad design. So, okay, any questions? Does everyone know how to get the hearts? Do you guys want to try it? All right, are we safe to move on or would anyone like some help trying to, trying to get, this, get this down? Okay, Pablo's fine, looks like Simon's good. Okay, so we'll move on. If you have any other questions on how to do this, open lab sessions tomorrow and I'd be happy to pull this up. Okay, so let's move on, that was it. That's all I wanted to review from assignment one. So let's go back to assignment two. All right, well, let's talk about our text. Um, there's lots of different text out there or text options that we don't really have a lot of time to review, but I wanted to talk about, this is skewed text where you can skew the letters. Drop cap is when you have, you'll often see this in magazines, if you guys read magazines, and newspapers, um, even books, they'll have a drop cap, which is an enlarged first letter of the opener paragraph. Um, this is just a, a character style, and uh, you can also do a raised cap, and I'll show you how to do that. Here in a minute. And scaling, we probably had some um, some experience with scaling for this ad assignment and for the smoothie assignment. But this talks about um, this first example here uh, has no scaling at all. The vertical scaling has been altered; it's been increased, so naturally that makes it taller. If you extend the horizontal scaling, that makes it wider. So there's a lot that you can do uh, with customizing fonts, customizing text, uh, you can scale. I'm sure you worked with kerning and letting. Those all are, are very helpful too in getting the customized look that you're looking for. And then highlighting, highlighting text is also, um, it's not very commonly done, but it is an option to do. And it's also in what we call a character style, which is where you, um, you're able to 
well, I'll get into that in a little bit, but character styling is where you can, how would I explain this? Um, just different features you can do with the, with the fonts. Just different options you have to customize your fonts or your text, make things stand out. All right, uh, we're not gonna go over making a highlighter today because we don't have time, but I wanted to talk about examples for, for fonts, okay? There, this is part of our discussion also. Fonts communicate, they are a way to uh, advertise, they're a way to catch attention. Font, fonts themselves are, typography itself is an art, and um, a lot of designers can customize their own typography. There's a lot of really cool things you can do. Um, I just saw these examples and I wanted to share them with you as we're going through our discussion. I wanted you to be thinking, what is this typography trying to explain or express or what kind of ideas it's supposed, supposed to promote? And um, so I want you to kind of look at that and get a feel for the examples that I'm looking for in our discussion too, because I really, I love discussions because we can share visual examples of what we're talking about. So we'll just move on. Okay, so let me pull up InDesign real quick and show you what I was talking about text. So if you grab your type tool, and I'm going to type in the word text. Make it even bigger for you guys at home. There we go. So this is my text box. Now I can, there's a lot of different things I can do with this. I can enlarge the font by going up here, making it bigger. Um, I can take this first letter of my sentence or my word, and I can enlarge it by doing what we call a drop cap. There we go, whoops. Like that, a drop cap where the first letter is bigger. By doing that, you wanna make sure you're, you're on your paragraph formatting controls. It's got this paragraph icon. And you go to the right and hover over this part, it says drop cap number of lines. Does everyone see that? By altering that, it will expand, it'll enlarge or decrease the size of your, the first letter of your sentence. Okay, and then the other option I wanted to show you, let's see, you can enlarge the amount of letters. So if I wanted to do the first two letters, I could do that. That's the drop cap, one or more characters. But most commonly you'll see one drop cap. If I wanted to do a raised cap, let's see, uh, where is it, here we go. I would just raise it by using the baseline shift. What that does is it raises the text. And then I think, oh yeah, you can choose to skew it by adjusting the vertical scaling scale value or the horizontal scale value like this. So if I zero this out, highlighted it and I wanted to do a 130% on the scaling. This extends my, my vertical scale. If I want to adjust the horizontal scale, what I would do, this makes it nice and wide. It makes it fatter, wider. The uh, vertical is makes it taller, longer. Okay, what are you looking for, Pablo? Where is the paragraph formatting controls? You should also be able to find it if you, you're okay? Okay, cool. Yeah, it should be at the top, I don't know where everyone's default um, controls are, but mine is at the top of my screen. If you don't see it under your character formatting, look under paragraph formatting. Okay, so there's some, some different options on how to adjust your text. Um, let's see what else I wanted to review with you. Oh yeah, paragraph styles. Where do you need to know how to do that for assignment two? So paragraph styles is very similar. 
paragraph styles will save you a lot of time. Now let's talk about that for a minute. Let's go back to here. Uh, we're not doing highlighter. You know what? I didn't make a slide for it, but I will talk about it. So one second. Let me close out all my windows. Share. There we go. Let's go back to this top. Okay. So here I want, whoops. Here I want to talk to you about paragraph styles. Paragraph styles are very similar to character styles in the sense that, that you can save your settings and apply them to your, to your text throughout your design, your file design. Um, you can save them for later and it saves you a lot of time. Um, InDesign, InDesign is really cool because you can save your settings if you apply a, an effect on a text. I'm going to fill this with placeholder text just so that we've got some text to work with. But if you've ever formatted large amounts of text in Adobe InDesign and then you had to go back and change the font size or the color or the character size or the letting of all of the headings or the body text, you'll know how time consuming it can really be. And it takes a long time to kind of go through the large documents changing the attributes for each little bit of text. Now this might not be so cumbersome for one page of a smoothie assignment, but if you're working on a 200 page magazine or a 400 page book and you've got to go make a change and apply it to, to multiple sections, this can be very daunting and take a lot of time unfortunately. So what's cool about InDesign is they've created a way to make a change, save it, and then apply it to other areas in your document. Um, if you had to manually go in and change attributes for each little piece of text, it would be really a reliable way to work. So what we're going to do is talk about how to include paragraph styling, which is part of your assignment. Um, it doesn't explain it in your assignment, so I'm going to go over it right here. Um, it's very simple to set up text styles in, in InDesign. And so what I want to do is talk about, first of all, is our headline. So I'm going to type in headline. Please feel free to work with me. Um, does everyone know how to fill placeholder text? All you really knew, need to do, um, if, you, if you want some, in InDesign, you're just going to need to create a random document, load some text into it. Now, if you want some sample text to play with, you can go to type fill with placeholder text and it should fill a text box with just random Latin words. This is what we call dummy text. So it's, it's been around and it has been since the 1500s when um, a printer actually took a galley of type and scrambled it to make a type specimen book. And so that's why we, we call it this today. Just kind of cool. Yeah, Ipsum, exactly, warm Ipsum. So create a couple of paragraphs and a heading or two and, and flow it into InDesign, um, flow it into the InDesign text box. So just like what I'm gonna do here. I get rid of the swatches. So I typed in headline, I'm gonna type in subheadline. Okay, and I'm gonna type in it's my body, te body text. Be right back. So for the headline, I'm going to make it nice and big. I'm just going to pick a setting. And for my sub headline, actually for my headline, I'm going to give it a color. So it really stands out. Okay, that's a good question, Simon. When we get to the assignment, I'll tell you guys what fonts to use as we're working with it. I will save time and class to go over it with you. So um, hold on to that question, and if I forget to address it later, um, let me know. But I will make a note of that so we can get through it. Yep, um, that's a great question. Um, we are supposed to copy the design again, so fonts are gonna be very important. Okay, so I'm giving this a color, I'm giving it a font. Let's see, let's do this Helvetica, or no, let's do Times New Roman. We all have that one. Okay, I'm gonna do, it's set for bold. Now my subheadline, I will also do Times New Roman. 
And I want this regular, no, I want italic. I'm gonna make them different. And then I'll make this 30. So there's my subheadline. There's my headline. And then my body text, I'm gonna set all of my body, or body text right here to Times New Roman. It doesn't matter what font you're using for this. I'm just showing you an example. I want my font to be nine. And there we go. All right, so now say we were working with multiple documents, multiple pages, lots of sections that would have this, that I need to create the same headline for each, same um, body text, same subheadline. So if I were to turn this into a sub or subheadline, so does everyone does everyone need time to set up a headline and a subheadline? Just set up some kind of a, a text format. Give it a color, give it a font size. And then once you've done that, just type in headline and then once you've done that, we'll I'll show you how to how to make a paragraph style. So basically you're formatting the text in any way that you like. Don't worry about how good or bad it looks for now. I just want you to create two or three distinctly different text styles, okay? You should be able to apply most attributes using the control palette, going to window, selecting swatches, giving it a color. Is everyone okay with where we are right now? Do you need some more time? Okay, so we'll move on. So now the object is, is to be able to save these settings, okay? So now we wanna set up the paragraph style. So click anywhere within your, your heading and you go to window and open up the paragraph styles palette. Go to window, type, and select paragraph. Does everyone see that? Paragraph. And this brings up your paragraph settings. So from the little submenu in the corner of the paragraph styles palette, select new paragraph style. So, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. Let's do new paragraph styles. And you'll see this little dialog box right here. You see this doggy ear page? You want to click this, it's create new style. We're going to give it a name. Um, by double clicking on it, it should allow you to edit the name. I'm going to name this headline. Just name it what you're going to remember it to be, okay? Um, this is going to be a basic paragraph, uh, basic paragraph style. Now, the paragraph styles affect entire paragraphs of text. Um, this is why character styles affect, and whereas character styles affect individual characters or selected areas of text. So, for example, you may want to apply a paragraph style to a block of text and make it Times New Roman, but within there, you may need to do um, a couple, you might need a couple bold words. These would have a bold character style applied to them. Um, but we're going to look at, uh, we'll look at character styles another time. Paragraph styles, though, is what we're going to need for our assignment. So from this little submenu in the corner of the paragraph styles palette, select new paragraph style. It will expand to reveal a dialog box. So you'll see it here. And then select paragraph and give it the name, give it a name. I typed in headline, as you can see here or something similar, you need to give it a name that will make sense to you so that once the style sheets palette is bursting at the seams with styles, you can easily find the one that you want. In this case, it's easy because we've only, we're only creating one or two, but if you were working with a multi-page document, again, you would probably have 20 or 30 different versions. Now, if you click the various options down the side, you'll see that the style has automatically inherited the attributes of the text that you've placed, okay? So if I were to go here and want to apply my headline, 
formatting, I'll just click on headline. And now it automatically copies it. If I want this word to be a subheadline, I simply click on it. Oh, I need to create my subheadline. So I'm going to just highlight my subheadline, click create new style, subheadline, hit OK. So now it's automatically saved my formatting. I'll highlight this section and click on subheadline. So now, now I don't have to go back and change the color, the size, the font. Now it's automatically saved in my paragraph style. So when I go back to it, each time if I just want to change something, I just click on my uh, preset settings. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to do screen share time. For those of you who aren't uh, familiar with the way that I teach, I like to do a screen share. Would anyone like to screen share an example of their paragraph styles that they've done? No takers, huh? Okay. We'll give you some time to work on this. This is what you'll need to know. Um, since we're getting close to our 10 minute break, I do want to start the assignment, but we have time to do it. Um, let's talk about I want to talk about master pages real quick. So we're going to go here. So a master page holds and displays all the elements that you want to appear on every page in a document. Um, this can include headers, logos, page numbers, as you see here, and footers. The master is like a background layer to a page. So you see in this pages section of your dialog box that this has an A master. And then you've got your pages, which are separate. So anything that is applied to your master will automatically be applied to your pages. It's okay, Sonia. Thank you. We'll see ya. All right. So everything on the background layer appears on the page above it. Master elements appear on document pages surrounded by a dotted border. So you'll see this little dotted border. Any feature that I put on to this master page will have a dotted border. I'll give it a color. Whoops. If you don't see the dotted border, you're not on the master page. Okay, there's the dotted border. All right, even if I lighten up the opacity a little so you can see it. There's the dotted border, okay? Master elements appear on the document pages surrounded by this dotted border so to make them easily identifiable. So if you don't see this dotted border like what I just did, then I'm obviously we're on the wrong page. When you create a new document, you also create a master page. If you wanna create additional master pages, you can create them from scratch or from an existing page or spread. What's cool about master pages is that you can apply page numbers, headlines, uh, backgrounds, and they'll automatically be applied to the next, any page that you add that's new. So if I create new, I'll, back, I'll zoom out here so you can see, um, I've applied, applied this cool banner and this page number. If I add a new page, it automatically includes my page numbers and my banners, so I don't have to do that 10 times. So with your assignment to do the CD cover, you're going to want to set up a master page. This is going to be good practice to learn how to apply your background. Um, instead of having to do things 50 times, you'll just need to do it once and then it's set up for you. Does that make sense on master pages? Now to do a master page number, let me show you how to include a master page number. This I never knew until I was well into my career. Are they still adjustable? That's a great question, Becky. The pages that follow, yes. Now here's, um, 
here's the thing with master pages. You can go back to the master page at any time. Where did my tools go? I just clicked out. Um, you can go back to the master pages at any time and it will, and you can edit it just fine. So I just drew this green box. I can delete it now. Um, if you make a change on your master page, it will automatically be applied to your other pages. Now you ask a question that I think is excellent because I'm going to pull up our pages again so you can see the page view of what we're doing. On these pages, I'm going to go to this green box here. I'll draw this green box. Okay, and then pretend we're on page two. And that green box, you cannot move. You cannot edit it unless you go to your master pages to make the change. It's not page one. Right, Kate. Master pages is something separate. So here's page one. Here's page two, page three. I can put anything on these pages that I want, okay? And I can edit them. Anything that's on a master page, which is above, will be applied to this left side master, will be applied to all the left pages. This right side master, right here, will be applied to all the right side pages. So, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to add a green square and a red square that you can see. So this is my master. Now look at what happened. As soon as I drew that red square, look at my left side pages. I'm going to, whoops. If I click new, look what automatically happens. Do you see that? So it's now applying my background or those objects, um, page numbers, anything that's on that master to these new pages. So if I had a 20 page book, the last thing I want to do is have to apply my green rectangles and my red squares in the same place. Um, this is a great way to keep accuracy and consistency. So I don't want to do this 20 times. It's doing it for me. Um, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense when we're doing a four page CD cover, but believe me, when you're doing a multi page document, you're definitely going to want this. Let me show you how to uh, add a, yeah, I think it's nifty 2 K. Let me show you how to do a insert uh, page number. Okay. Can everyone please set up a master page? I'll give you two minutes on the clock to go to your master. If you don't see your pages dialog box, go to your drop down window and everything's alphabetical. Select pages. Make sure that's check marked. Okay, and once that's pulled up, you just double click on your A master or double click on your B master, or I'm sorry, your A master left or your A master right. Now, here's the mind blowing thing you can have. A master, B master, C master, D master. If you want to apply a certain setting to different masters um, for multi pages, and um, you can you can do that as well. But we only need to work with one master for now. I just want to show you that that is uh, the sky's the limit, really, with the options that you have. InDesign is a great program for multiple page documents because it is friendly in the way that you can set up and save formatting, uh, how to bold or a set up a certain, like we just did a paragraph style, how to do a character style if you want to highlight something or if you want to italicize something or underline something, that's pretty helpful. When you're working with a 100 page document, it's not consistent if you try to place each page number 100 times. You need to be able to have it applied. So it's just this automatic thing that happens. And so that's what's really helpful about these, these master pages. All right, so here is how you apply a text, a page number. You grab your type tool, you position it anywhere you'd like on the page, wherever you want your, your page number to show up. I'm gonna bring it here on the bottom left. I like using my rulers and guides for this. Just make sure your cursor is blinking and you see your dotted line. Go to type, insert special character, or wait, let's see, yeah. And I want markers. Current page number. Now on the master, you'll see a letter and that's, gonna, you're gonna be like, well, what's the letter for? That's not a number. That means that it will, whatever the current page number you're on, it will automatically put that in on the pages section. So if I go to page six of my document, double click, 
So you double click on your pages, it'll take you to that page. Now look, page six has been entered. I go to page 13, page 13 is there. So what's really cool is that it will automatically add these features to your pages as you go. Are there any questions about master pages? Okay, now I know it's kind of daunting hearing my voice for a whole two hours. So I have a video that I want to share. Okay. Let me pull it up. Use my desktop. Just ignore my messy, messy desktop. There we go. Oh, whoops. Let's see, that's not it at all. Let's go here. Pull up my document again. Here it is. Okay, so here's a little video. It should, Simon. Um, I don't believe there's a whole lot of difference in having to set up a, a master page. So um, C6, CCC, I'm on CC, so um, Creative Cloud, I've got that, and that's what I'm working in, and it's all the same. There's, the differences with Creative Cloud are, are for the more advanced settings. It's the basics and placement is all about the same. So it's a good question. Okay, so let me expand this. Can you guys see my screen? Expanded, can you see the video front page? Okay, cool. Um, okay, give me one second, I'll get the, the video started. Master pages, did he design? Um, master pages can be accessed in your pages panel by going to window pages, making sure you've got that checked, and that will bring the pages panel up on screen. By default, you'll have one page there and this one is an A master. Now the master page is a page that will contain information that you want repeated over and over again. So this might be the grid or it might be page numbers or in this example I'm going to show you uh, I've got a little thing up here let's assume this is a magazine and this has a features page. I wouldn't want to make this for every page and um, that would be laborious so the best thing to do is if I place it on my master page, so I'm not in here, this is, this is the area where I'd normally design into, but if I design instead into the master page, that feature, that device will then be repeated on every, in this case, every left-hand page. Let's assume I want to apply something to both pages. So I'm in my master palette here, so I'm not working in uh, page one, I'm actually working up here in the master palette. I have down shift there, so I've selected both pages, and in here, I'm going to do some, I perhaps make a grid. So if I just go up to my layout, create guides. Um, actually for this to work, I need to make sure, just catch that, I need to make sure that I have my gui guides visible by selecting W, otherwise it'd be invisible. W hides and reveals your guides, remember. Um, so back to layout, create guides. And if I just put some, I've got to make sure the preview's checked as well. So I'm just going to put a quick, simple grid in, just by way of example. Drop this gutter space down. And so let's say that's our grid, okay? Um, remember, you can fit this either to margins or page. Just click OK. Now that is now that information, all that information, including my features page device there uh, and my grid is now on that, the master page. So this time, when I click and drag and bring any subsequent pages into InDesign, I just make some more pages here, that information is carried across out of the master page into my actual design. Now you might find when you go to, you might reach say page 50 and you don't need this feature up here, um, you can override, you'll go to click it and nothing will happen, it's locked. By default, things are locked on the master page. 
However, if I hold down Shift Command and click, I can release that. So I can take that off. So if there's a page I didn't want that to repeat, I just have to do that again. Shift, click, and get rid of that. That's now missing from that page, but it will appear on any subsequent pages, pages brought out from the master pages palette. All right. So do you guys feel like you've got master pages down pretty well? Hopefully all that makes sense. All right, let's get back to InDesign. Okay. Scan my screen. All right, so any questions about master pages? Do you guys want to go over anything else before we jump back into the assignment? Okay, so Simon had a question. Um, you're saying, Simon, that the fonts don't work on your PC? Okay, that might be a question for the AD. Uh, since they set up the courses, I will check with them and ask them what we need to do. Look for an email or an announcement from me um, soon. I will, I'll email them tonight and see if they can get back to me quickly. Um, now, are you saying that they, they don't download at all? Okay, and do you know what they recommend? Okay, um, yeah, in this case, I won't be super picky about it, but we'll, we'll figure something out. Okay, let me get this minimized. Let me also pull up the example. Okay, can everyone please download the newsletter example or the newsletter zip file? Does everyone have that up? We're going to set this up. This is an eight and a half by 11. So we're going to go to file, new document, your new document dialog box pop up. We only need one page. We need, uh, let's see, eight and a half inches by 11 inches. Orientation is portrait, and that's about all we need for this assignment. Hit OK. All right. Now, would you guys like to work alongside with me, or do you want me to just go through the assignment? What do you prefer? Okay. So here is what we need to do. We need to copy this layout exactly. Thanks, Simon, appreciate it. All right, so I'm gonna assume that you're gonna work alongside with me. This is an eight and a half by 11 page. Now we've been given the folder. This is, oh, that's the CD one. This is the font and here's my other one. Oh, here it is, okay. So you might want to have both files up. I'm this over here. Working in multiple windows is very hard when Zoom is up. I don't know what to do with this chat box. Okay, Becky. Well, then I'll just go right through it since the majority rules. So everyone just wants to watch. I will pull this up. Okay, first things first is we need the logo. So let's work from top to bottom, okay? Grab the logo. I'm going to drag it in. 
or well, I guess I probably should do it the, the correct way. Huh? You can't, I don't think we're gonna be able to place an Illustrator file in here. Yeah, I guess you can. Okay, that was the first I've done that. All right, so I just dragged it from the from the zip file into here. This is the logo. Lucky for you, it's already been designed, so that's that. That's easy. I'm just using these margins, this pink line here, to kind of guide and keep everything within this this line. I want everything to lie flush with this purple line. Okay, this is my guide, my ruler and guide. I don't want to see any elements staggered or outside. I want everything within it. And it will even snap into place if you have your smart guides on, okay? Text or objects alike. Everything with newsletters, newsletters are kind of a uh, cool layout. You want to be able to display a lot of information, but do it in a very eye-catching way. It's almost like a article magazine page. Uh, magazines have to create more aesthetically pleasing things at uh, layouts so that it catches your eye, but they have to balance it with a lot of text, and so that can get tricky too. It's plagiarism. Yeah, I thought it looked familiar too. I've seen it before. Oh well. Well, in this case, we're not selling our designs. If you sell them, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble, but if you're not selling your designs, we're okay. All right, so like I said, we're going to move from top to bottom. I've got my logo placed. Um, it's asking me to enter my month, my year, so we want to add the current month and year. So I'll grab my type tool. It's going to go up here. Most of the fonts are Helvetica, so hopefully you have Helvetica already. So even if you're on a PC, um, you could use Helvetica if you want to find something that's similar, Arial will be acceptable. I'm going to do Helvetica regular, and I'm going to type in my current month and year. So we're in November 2015. I'm going to give it a white fill. Double click on my fill box here at the bottom of my toolbar. And I'm going to give it a white fill. Another way to find white is if you go to your window drop down menu, click on color, and go to swatches. It's F5 on your keyboard. And then this will allow you to give some basic swatches like white and black. Okay, I'll just keep that up because I may need it for later. In this case, so uh, my font size for this, this is Helvetica 12 point and I've got it at regular. Um, if I want to create some contrast, I could bold the 2015 for fun. But we'll just stick to this. Okay, now I need my headline. So I'm gonna to go to my text headline and I'm gonna type in today in the sky. Now, here is a suggestion. I would prefer if you would type this into Word before you put it into InDesign, just so that you can make sure it's spell checked. There is a way to run spell check in InDesign, um, but I, it, when, I just know that if you're typing into InDesign, you can make a lot of mistakes. So just, you can even copy from, let me see if I can copy the text. No, I can't copy the text. Um, either way, just be very careful you proofread beforehand. Pablo is asking, can we use the template underneath? Yes, absolutely you can. That might be a smart way to do it. That's what I did last time Kyle, for the smoothie. Let me get my layers window. Thank you, Pablo. Windows layers. Let's start with that. So we don't, we'll stick with what we know. I'm going to throw this template into, ah, so many things going on. Okay, well, let's grab our example. Throw it in here. There we go. Place it as best you can. It should place fairly accurately. Make sure it's on the Send it back. Here we go. And then I'm going to lock this layer so I can't move it. I'm also, well, before I lock it, I'm going to give it a transparency. 
And then I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to grab my elements, like my date, new layer. I go to layer two, and this is where I'll paste Now with layer one, I'm going to adjust the opacity a little bit. Oops. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust the opacity fairly really well so that we can see what we're laying on top of. All right, so here is the logo. Here's the date. Next thing I need, let me pull this up so I can see it. Next thing I need is to draw my or to write in my headline. So again, it helps to have this layer on the back, like Pablo said. Be aware of what's capitalized and what's not. I'm gonna be very nitpicky about this. And I'm gonna to try to get it as close as possible. I'm on Helvetica. Probably want to do a different Helvetica though. It looks condensed. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Let's zoom out. There we go. You can even, um, if you have Helvetica and you wanna just match it up fairly close, you can pull up your paragraph, go to Window, go to Type and Tables, and go to Character. And this character box will allow me to mess with the, the height the vertical scaling and also the width and I'm going to try to do a bold on this there we go if you get it fairly the same size that's all that matters if it's a sans serif font good. I just want it to look nice and neat. Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to create this. And, oh, now I need the picture. I need to place the picture. So I'm going to grab airplane one. Oops. I'm going to grab another layer. Airplane one. And remember to resize a photo proportionately. You hold down Shift and Alt. I'm sorry, Shift and Control. And then I'm gonna extend the edge of my box. Look at this, guys. If you ever need to resize your photo, I don't wanna see you stretching it. I don't wanna see that, okay? You extend your frame box to the edge of where you want it to be, and then click at the top here, fill frame proportionately. There you go. So now I've got my photo placed. I need my next photo of the staff. Click and drag. 
This one's a lot smaller. Again, we hold down shift and control, or shift and on a Mac, it's shift and command or shift and control on PC. All right, so there we go. So far, airplanes are placed, logos placed. I've got my month and year here at the top. You will need to adjust text slightly, but we know how to do that now, right? We just open up our, par our character formatting. I'm gonna grab my text box. I'm gonna line it up here. Okay, so here's where we're gonna uh, apply a paragraph style, just like we learned. I'm going to give this Helvetica. Let's do medium condensed, and then I'll, I don't want it that large. Right about there. I'll do a bold condensed. Okay, and then I'll adjust the horizontal a little bit so it at least lines up. I just want it to line up with those letters. Move it down. That was pretty close. I'm gonna line up my text box. Do you see those arrows, those green arrows? I'm lining everything up with my picture, including my headline, it needs to line up just like that. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna click on this travel bargains, this headline, and I'm gonna create a paragraph style like we did just in the exercise below. So I'm gonna grab my paragraph styles. I'm gonna click new. And here is where I'm going to type in subheadline. I'm going to hit OK. So now when I grab my, te my text box and do the sky is the limit, it's the same font. I just highlight it, go to my paragraph styles, and double click on headline. And it now applies that paragraph style for me. Now, to make it fit, I'm adjusting the, the tracking. Now, the tracking can be found right here. If you hover over this, you see tracking. It's a VA almost. If you do negative, it will shrink it. If you do plus, it will increase it. Okay, so this is my tracking. The tracking is the space between the letters. So if I'm tightening up tracking, you ever hear me say that, tighten your tracking? That means uh, decrease the amount of space between each letter. If you hear letting, that is decreasing or increasing the space between each uh, word or I guess line of text. All right, so I've got that placed. Are there any questions at this point? Okay, so we're, we're comfortable with paragraph styles. Okay. So now let's do text. I'm gonna click and drag. I wanna get the columns about the same size. And I'm going to only draw one column of text, and here's why. Go to type, fill with placeholder text, and then I'm gonna line it up. You're gonna do one at a time. Go to type, fill with placeholder text, now your text may not line up exactly, and that's fine because filler text is unpredictable. You don't know what you're gonna get. I just want it to end and start at about the same, same place. Type, fill with placeholder text, okay? Now everything looks right, my columns line up, everything is good, I have the same space between my columns as I do my picture, everything looks good. 
Now, here's where I need to do a drop cap. I'm going to do the eye so that it, I'm going to create an eye so that you can see the example behind it so it looks similar to the example behind it. Highlight the eye and we're going to do a drop cap. Go to your paragraph, formatting controls, just like we explained. If you forget where it is, just kind of hover over. It says drop cap number of lines. That's what you want. You want one. Let's increase it to two, three, until it gets to about the same size. Hey, Sherry, thanks for joining us. We're just going over the newsletter design. So I've just applied a drop cap to it. Go ahead and pull up InDesign if you'd like. And what's left? Okay, yeah, we're gonna wanna include the last picture. Oh, we have the vintage plane. Do a point. I'll get her down here. I wanna line it up. Remember, shift and control or shift and command. And we wanna line up the frame. As close as you can get, don't shrink the picture. Remember, once you've lined up the frame properly, click fill frame proportionately. It will fill it in for you. Okay, this avoids the temptation to stretch a photo to make it fit the column. Make, make sure it's filled proportionately. Okay, we're gonna take our 10 minute break. What I want you guys to do is pull up InDesign and start getting some things laid out, okay? Click a... Um, or I'm sorry, place your text, place the photos. I don't care, get something in here, get your document set up eight and a half by 11 inches. And I wanna see it when we get back, I want you to screen share and show me what you've got within the next 10 minutes, okay? All right, any questions before we go to break? Okay, it looks like Simon found that Myriad Pro is a close second. So if you have Myriad Pro, if you want to use Helvetica, the fonts that they've given us for the CD cover, I think, are Helvetica. So as long as you can get it similar. I just want it to be roughly the same size. And it needs to be sans serif if the font sans serif, or serif if the font, font is serif. All right, well, let's go to break. We'll be back in 10 minutes.
Okay, so how does everyone feel with this assignment so far? All right, it looks like Simon just heard back from the Dean about the fonts for the PC. So what did you find out, Simon? Okay, yeah, so that's fine. For this class, as long as the fonts are comparable, just make sure that um, they're roughly the same size, same font weight. Um, if, I just want it to be, if it's a sans serif font, make sure you match the sans serif font. If it's a serif font, make sure you match the serif font. It doesn't matter to me if you use Helvetica versus Arial. I just want to make sure that it's in the right place, it's roughly the same size, and it starts and ends where it should. Does that make sense? Thank you for looking into that, Simon. I appreciate that. So yeah, just find a comparable font. Okay, let's move on. Um, are there any questions before? Let's see, what are we doing here? Where's my assignment? Here it is. Okay, so I'm not sure if everyone's back yet, but we're gonna go ahead and move on. Um, if you're trying to create this little icon here, it is just a rectangle with a triangle. So get your eyedropper tool, grab the blue that's in that logo, and then you're gonna to wanna to create a triangle. The way to do that is get your polygon tool, click once anywhere on the artboard, it okay, we went over how to, um, whoops. You want three sides, no inset. Hit okay, and that creates a triangle. All right, and I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool, click on the blue. Same blue, I'm gonna rotate. If you hover over the corner anchor point, it will allow you to click and uh, click and rotate your object. If you want it to snap into place when you get get it all the way 180 degrees, hold down shift and it will perfectly align your object. And then I'll just bring this in like this. Okay, so that's how you create that shape. Just make sure that these, um, these overlap or edges touch. Okay, uh, for sake of time, I'm gonna move on to the CD cover because we only have about half an hour to go over that. Um, any questions before I move on from here? Anything you wanna know how to do? Anything you kind of feel unsure about? And we also have tomorrow uh, open lab if you wanna come and ask questions as well. Are we all good? Okay. Well, without further ado, we are going to move forward. Okay, so I believe it was Sonia that gave me the dimensions for the CD cover earlier in a class. It was four point, oh, sorry, 4.75 by 4.75. Go to File, New, Document. Number of pages, we want them to be facing pages. We want four of them. 4.75 inches by 4.75 inches. That creates a true square and hit OK. I don't know if there's any bleed or anything, so just double check that. Make sure that you, you read the instructions. Um, this is just going to give you a rough idea of how things are going to be laid out. So let's go back to our pages view here. You'll see that um, you'll see that things aren't side by side. So what I'm going to do is work on page two, three, four, and five. Now, when you're creating your PDF, you'll have to specify which pages you want your PDF. I don't want to see the extra page here. Just so I want to see the view between two and five. Okay. 
So page two is what you're going to work on. You'll see that this is what it looks like side by side. Have you guys looked at the, the assessment at all? Let's take a look at what it's supposed to look like. Now, I know when we hear about CD cover, we kind of think, oh, this would be super complicated. It's really not, and it's not meant to be complicated. So let's, let's look at this and see if we can simplify this for ourselves. Um, all the elements are provided to you, the background, the fonts. If you have trouble with fonts, just kind of get a rough, uh, try to find something that's similar. Let's go to the next page. Number two is lyrics. There's a little bit of paragraph formatting here, so I want you to be aware of that. And page three, more lyrics. And then on the back, you've got your, your text. Now, I'm not gonna get to everything here today, but we will start with the cover, okay? First things first, I'm gonna leave this out so that we can, we can apply it. Nice thing is, is they've, that you don't have to type anything. They have the lyrics already provided to you in a Word document and the song titles are already there. So this saves you time right there. You don't have to type anything in. Um, let's start with this page. I grab my file. I'm going to bring in CD cover here. And I'm going to hold down shift and control. Try to get it roughly the same size. You want even amount of space on all sides. You can help it. And then for the A master on the right or on these pages, I want you can either choose to apply your background. You do both pages, one here, one here. And I'm gonna see if there's anything else that I need. That's it, just my background. So click on two and this is what it looks like. Now my A master has been applied to all of my pictures. Okay. Second thing I need is the font, I guess, country grades. Let's see, I don't know if I downloaded that font. Okay, grab your type tool. Here's also where you probably want to place. The unfortunate thing is that this isn't in separate PDFs, so to place it and try to trace it, it I don't think you're going to be able to do that. You can do it for the cover if you want, but in a PDF, I don't think you can specify which page. You could do a screenshot and then place it and then let that be your layer if you need that help, but I challenge you to try to do it without tracing. Try to eyeball it if you can. Grab the type tool, open with, what are you asking, Kay? The option to open the file with InDesign. Um, what, what's your question? I'm sorry, I'm not following. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can right click when you have the file. Yep, you're right. Open with InDesign if you have that option. So you're just saying right click. And then pick InDesign. Yep, that's another that's another way to do it. Oh, whoops, I picked Illustrator. That is not what I want. Yep, good job. Okay, so yeah, so you, you can also click right click, find InDesign.
you can open with and then place it that way if you want. Okay, so I'm going to do the text, Country Greats, title. I'll highlight it. I'm going to give it the font that they had. Some, what's it called? Country. Go to Old Western. That's what it's called. So just find a Western font if you can. There it is. Now, um, when you place a font, if there's too much space, if you look at this, this example here, you see how country grades, the letting is very tight. Um, the letters aren't quite touching, but there, there isn't a whole lot of space between the words. So, and then in my example, there's a lot of space between the words. So I really want to adjust my letting. Um, you can do that here. Let's see, where's letting right here? That's grinning, tracking, letting. Here we go. You can subtract it to bring it in. Our keyboard shortcut is holding down Alt or Option and the up and down arrow once your text is highlighted. And the more I expand this, the more adjustment I'm going to need to make. So again, I'm just going to bring it down ever so slightly. And if you'll notice the curvature of the guitar, they, they have this Y kind of hovering over this curvature. Make sure that even amount of space between the Y and the guitar, you just want to be mindful of that. And then um, I'm going to type in this other element. Timeless Country Classics. If you highlight that, go up to type, change case, click uppercase. No joke, this took me about well into my career too to know that I didn't have to retype my, my text with the caps lock key on. I thought if I typed something in lowercase, I'd have to retype it all in uppercase if I wanted that effect. But really, you save your time going to time or type, change case, uppercase. It's a game changer, people, I promise. Okay, and then this one needs to get increased. Probably not that big. Go. There's a return on Country Classics. There we go. It's about 24 font size. Now here, I want you to pay attention. I want to line up my text box with the other text box, okay? So everything lies flush. If you ever hear me say, make sure everything lies flush, that's what I mean. I want it to all line up. See how it snaps into place? With that green light that smart that green line that smart guide it goes on means I want it to all line up okay it's starting to come together this thing might be a little too big so I'll bring it down two points that looks about right I want to tighten the letting between classics and timeless country so I'm going to adjust my letting letting can be found here under character letting you can also find that going to window, type in tables, go to make sure character is selected and this dialog box pulls up. Your lighting is right here. See that? Okay, thanks Simon, I appreciate it. Just send me an update if you hear. All right, so let's, um, so that's, that's how to place that. I don't see, Do you guys uh, want some time to work on this? Or do you want me to keep going? Let's do some paragraph formatting here on one of the inside pages. This country memory. So it looks like the same size that's on Timeless Country here is going to be the same size on your lyrics page. So I'm going to set a paragraph style. So I'm going to go to Window, Type in Tables, 
paragraph. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. Type paragraph styles, and I'm gonna click new. This will be my subheadline. Hit OK. So now when I go over here and type in country memory, actually you don't need to type it. Um, there's a Word document that's provided for you. I'm just doing this to save some time. Click on double, so double click on my paragraph style. And within the text box, you have your ability on your character formatting controls to center or right justify or left justify. This is called alignment. And I'd like to center my text box. Just because you've centered it within the text box doesn't mean it's centered. So you want to make sure you center your text. I might want to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'll add a new paragraph style. I'll type this lyrics page, lyrics title. Okay. And then you can place your lyrics within. Okay, are there any questions about this? I'm gonna give you guys a minute. I'd like to see you all set up your document with the four pages before I move any further. Uh, and I'd like to see you do a master. Place your background and your master pages. And I want to see it applied, okay? So I'll give you guys about three minutes to do that. And then I'll come back. So I want to see you set up your new document, 4.75 by 4.75. And I want to see your A master background placed. Okay, you guys can do that pretty quickly, I think. All right, time starts now. So do you have your document set up? Do you need more time? Those guys must be working away since they it's, it's pretty quiet. So right now while I'm waiting for you guys to tell me once your document's set up, I'm going to I'm just going to get these items placed real quick. Okay. 
Okay, well, actually, Pablo, we have time. So I'd like to see you guys, because I want you to share your screen. I want you to go to File, New Document, and it, it, uh, set up a new document. You don't have to place anything. I just want to see your new document set up. Can you do that for me? Because we're in class to, to work on this together. So I like to have you guys share your screen. Um, is anyone ready to show me, or do you guys need more time? I think everyone knows how to set up a new document. 4.75 inches by 4.75. If you guys would prefer to watch, that's totally fine. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Becky. Try to take advantage of the time that you've got me here to help you make sure you're, uh, I like to see that you guys are starting to set up your documents so we can make sure if you're making any mistakes, how to recover it. Okay, here's something that I want you to be aware of on this A master here that I set up. I just placed it, but it is well over my page so it's getting cut off so what I need to do is resize it to the page there we go now that should fix the problem same with my left my left one see how this see how this border is getting cut off I need to go to my a master I'm gonna bring this in click fill frame proportionately and now it's even Perfect. Okay, so Sherry, if you'd like to share your screen, I'll stop. Stop the share. And if you see share screen, click that icon. Click share screen and then select either desktop or if you have your InDesign app. Perfect. Okay, awesome. So Sherry's got her document all set up. I see. Um, Sherry, what you're probably going to want to do, yep, yeah, you've got your four pages. That looks good. And then all you need to do now is place your background into your A master. Okay, awesome job. Great, great job. That is exactly how I uh, wanted to see. Anyone else want to share? So you don't be intimidated by the share screen. I just want to make sure your document's set up correctly. Becky, do you want to share real quick? I'll go back to InDesign so you guys aren't staring at a black screen, but if you want to share, let me know. Um, anyone else? Kay, Kat, Simon? That's okay, Becky, it's super easy. So I'm gonna stop the share. Do you see that share screen icon right there in the, in the middle? There you go. Perfect. Nice job. Okay, awesome. So yeah, you've got your background placed for the first page. Now on the A master, you're going to want to put the other background, the inside background pages. And it looks like you only need the guitar placed on page one, right? Good job. So the size is right. The document set up correctly. Now what we need to do is um, you only need the document or the guitar on the first page. The other pages you'll just put in your in your A master the the background. Very very good job. Excellent. So I'll close out of here. So here, anyone else want to share? Okay, so I'll move on for sake of time. I'll go back here to, I'm going to pull up my lyrics, lyric, uh, oh, song titles, that's what I want. So I'm going to grab my song titles. It's so nice they're providing this text for you guys because this is the this that's what takes a lot of time is having to type it all in. 
I'm gonna move this over. Here we go. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to copy. I gotta see the example. Man, I have to have so many windows open, it's annoying. Okay, so we want CD1 is the first one. I'm gonna copy this, grab my type tool, make a column, paste. Now the key here is you want your type, your text boxes to be the same size, same width, same height. If you wanna get exact, what you can do is go to, let me see your X and Y or your width and height and just make sure that the second text box is the same. Or you can make sure that they're, uh, you can enter in a value like 9P5 and 18P0. Okay, and that way the second text box that you do, you know exactly what values they are. So in this case, um, now I've got to pull up the actual example. This is what's tricky is balancing the uh, million windows I have to have open. Okay, so for CD1, and actually all of these, for CD1, uh, I'm going to go to that Western font, old, or go to, yeah, Western, that's it. Looks like it's about the same size. I'm going to give it a 14 font. And for the little one, and so for the 14 font, I'm going to go to my paragraph styles. I'm going to pull it back up. Oh, that's not it. Type paragraph styles. Oops. There it is. And I'm going to click on new. It does have some bullets. I'll show you how to do that. Click on basic paragraph. Okay, uh, so now for this new one, it's gonna be bullet lyrics. Hit okay. And so for this, I need to add bullets. So where do you add bullets? Right up top, under your character formatting controls, very top right. You see this here, bulleted list. You click that. It should bullet for you. Oops. And it doesn't recognize the bullet. So we're gonna we're gonna cheat a little bit. Um, this font doesn't have a bullet character. So what we're gonna do, let me see. You can either number it, number it is fine. I don't think it has a bullet character that's recognizable here. If it was an ordinary font, not some um, fancy font, it would recognize it. So you can number it, I'll, I'll accept that. Now, if you notice, there's too much space between the one and the, and the word. I'll zoom in here. So to change that, to tighten up the space, just have your cursor blinking and I'm going to go, let's see if I can remember. Uh, there we go. So I can either do this. You just kind of have to mess with these. This one will pull it in. I right, like that. There we go. And this, so this is my bullet lyric. And this little part here, the time of the track, is going to be a new. Oops. Is going to be a new paragraph style. The time duration on the example is after the song, so it's not in front. It's after the song. So I'm going to put time here, and I'm going to change the font. Helvetica light. And I'm gonna make it very, very small, like seven point. And I think it's an, uh, a narrow one. So let me, Rebecca. 
See if I can find a condensed, a light condensed. Let's see here. There we go. So I'm doing Helvetica New Condensed. Right, okay, so Pablo's saying that the, the bullet is after. Is that what you're saying? So the bullet comes before the title of the song. Yeah, the bullet is in front. And in this case, this font doesn't recognize the bullets. Um, here's what you could do if you wanted to actually do a bullet um, and not do it this way. Um, if you want to do it this way, just number it. Or you can discontinue the bullet and go to type glyphs and find a box that looks similar. Let's expand this a little bit, shall we? I'll type in Times New Roman to see if I can find what I'm looking for. In your glyphs, they have those hidden characters that we were talking about within the font family. Here we go. And I want to find something that looks similar to a bullet. There's a little circle there, but I want the square. So we'll see if it has a square. I'm not seeing it. I know it has one in here somewhere. What's nice is once you do find the glyph you're using, like this one, you can just, it stores it for you. The eyedropper would recognize it, but since the assignment asks us to use paragraph styles, we have to, we have to include paragraph styles in this assignment. So yes, the eyedropper definitely would, but this, um, this assignment's asking for the paragraph styles. Uh, let's see, Myriad Pro might have the bullet. I'm gonna do zing bats. There we go. Oh, that's too big. Yeah, you'll just have to search for it, I guess, to find. I guess you could do that. Just do the square, highlight the square, make it much, much smaller like that. And then you could, let's see. Where do I want to do that? Oh, bring it up and then give it some space in between like that. So that's one way to do it. You want to make that much smaller, I'm sure. So that's how to do the actual bullet. I'm fine if you just want to click on the number. I think it's easier and quicker, but it's up to you. This is, this is my first. So you would probably do a paragraph style for the bullet. So double click on this one. Oops. That's for the lyric or for the song title. And I'll click on a new one for the bullet point. So now, oh, I guess the bullet point doesn't work. So you do need to do that manually, unfortunately. Um, so for this, Time, I'll click on the time. Whoop. It didn't copy the time. Let's do that again. Okay. So for me, I think the glyph thing is going to be too much time. So I'm just going to do grab the eyedropper tool and start fresh. Okay. So for the bullet, I would just do the number right here, one to two. Then you can adjust 
the space between by clicking on, I lost it again. There we go. Um, I don't think the kerning works for that. It's just going to tighten the letters, and I don't want to tighten the letters. I want to tighten the space between the letters. So um, when you're working with bullets, it doesn't allow you to highlight the space between it, so you have to adjust it this way. And I did that by using my first line indent, like this. First line indent, adjust the space between the letters, okay? Um, so that is... So you'll just have to set your paragraph styles um, for the time. All right, and then let's see if it worked. So we'll do the bullet point. So it doesn't include the bullet point, unfortunately. I'll bring that two in so it lines up for the time. Let's set the time to match this one. There we go. I know sometimes I wish that it would allow you to do that. All right, so let's try this one. Go to paragraph style, do the bullet point. You, I guess you have to manually enter the bullet point. Well, that's gonna get annoying. And you're probably, now that I'm doing this, you're probably going to need to do them all. So highlight all of them. I'm just going to open this for now. You have to highlight all of them to do the bullet point. You can't do them separately. That way now you can go in. Oh, why is it doing that? Anyways, it's giving me trouble. So you could use the eyedropper tool. The pair, I think with the bullet is what it's throwing, is throwing it off. I don't care which way you go. You can do the type, do glyphs, or you can do the bullet point. It's just gonna take some time trying to format it. That's the annoying part. So maybe we just get rid of bullet points altogether. Go. I wish it recognized yeah, it doesn't have, it doesn't recognize the bullets. You're going to probably have to create your own. But I'd add the bullet point after I've got everything formatted. So there we go. You can use the eyedropper tool if you find it to be faster, just as long as I can see that you used, that you do did save a paragraph style. So you, I can, uh, that I know that you understand what it is. You can include a different bullet, that's fine. Um, I did this one. Oops. And then the time. So I'm just kind of clicking and highlighting. This is really fast. Maybe I am a fan of the eyedropper tool instead. I don't know why they want you to do do it that way. I don't get to, I don't write the assignments, so <laughs> I wish I I wish I did because I'd have an easier way of doing things. And then you'll just include the bullet one at a time. You just double click the glyph to get it in. There we go. CD1, and then uh, you have like a little circle here. There's a glyph, CD1. Let's do that one. I'll grab my type tool, type it in one. Do white. I 
can make that significantly smaller. You can use your left and right top and bottom arrow keys to move your, your objects, text boxes, pictures. And I wanna zoom in here because I wanna center this one. Sometimes when you're zoomed too far out, it doesn't accurately, or if the object's so small, it doesn't accurately center things. There we go. Okay. There should be a glyph for that number one. Is there? Well, yeah, it's number one, but you still have to put it in a text box. Yeah, there, there is a glyph for number one. It's a good point. Let's try that. Let's try it Pablo's way. Let's do a text box. Double click on, it looks like this number one. Give it a white. Move it over. Here you go. Okay, good enough. Oops. All right, are there any questions? I'm probably not gonna be able to get to everything since we're running out of time here, but hopefully this allows you kind of some insight on how to get this laid out. You kind of have to eyeball it. This one, the CD one will give you a little bit more trouble because you're not gonna be able to place each page in side InDesign like you're used to tracing with the newsletter, but most of the work is done for you because all the type, uh, all the text is included, the background, the images, everything's included. So it's just a matter of placement and kind of eyeing where things go. Please keep in mind the distance between letters, the letting, the kerning, tracking. Make sure that you don't have too much space. Uh, your letters aren't tight together and there's not too much space in between them. Okay, and come tomorrow if you have any questions. Remember, tomorrow is your opportunity to come make some changes on your assessment one and assignment one. Uh, it's tomorrow only, so please show up. That would be great if you need the points. Yes, Kat, any questions? We're open to questions now. Good question, Simon. Thank you. Yes, good question. How do we turn this in? Okay, so um, that was one thing I forgot to get to on assignment one. Um, the instructions, let me pull up the instructions here. Let me stop this share, pull up my class, let's see. Yes, um, let me go to the, the assignment and see the exact instructions. I didn't read the package instructions for this assignment. Let me take a look real quick. I'll do a quick screen share so you can see. Okay, so let's look here. So for assignment two, for the newsletter design, you just kind of have to read it. It says, submit both a PDF and the native Illustrator file. Illustrator. This should be InDesign, ignore that. I want this done in InDesign. Um, Yeah, well, last week there were specific instructions. So for last week, I'll go to assignment one. I don't want to confuse you guys, but you just have to read the instructions. Um, that, that was half the battle was, so right here they said, submit both files with the following naming conversions. Um, your InDesign file, Oh wait, this is the name of the right class. I apologize. I was gonna say, what is this? I was completely lost. Okay, now that we're in Design 105, I was gonna say Illustrator. 
We're not doing Illustrator. Okay, for assessment one, for the newsletter, it says submission. You need a PDF packaged InDesign file zipped. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. Um, don't just submit your InDesign file so it won't be graded. Yep. Okay, and then um, PDF and a zip. So here is what you need need to do. Let's, let's take you to InDesign real quick. So say you're done with your, that was assessment one though. I, let's go see what they, first of all, I don't want to confuse you. Um, let's see if the same instructions are for assignment two. The, the point that's behind packaging your file is so that any, um, any images that you used, any fonts, they all get packaged in the same folder. Because if, you, if you're submitting to me, and I don't have that old Western font, um, it puts in a placeholder text, which can, which can completely skew the way that your layout looks if I don't have the same font you're using and you send it to me. So the, way, the reason behind packaging is so that you package fonts, objects, any, any text, anything that is within your InDesign document laid out gets put in a folder automatically. InDesign does it all for you. And um, that way when I open your file, I have access to those fonts and images and I can actually view the way it should be seen. If I don't, um, for example, if you place the guitar background and I don't have the guitar background photo, it's going to show a white screen. It's not going to show anything. So um, you need to, that's why it's so important. So, Simon, that's a good question. The thing that we're running into is that with any older version of Adobe, it's um, just not able to open the actual InDesign file. Yeah, you have the very latest. Um, I wasn't able to open, some of you guys have the most recent InDesign or Adobe CC version. I have the an older one so I know I emailed the Dean uh, last night and I was like I'm having trouble seeing students so I'm taking your word for it for now um, if you're not using your design properly that's kind of it, it's just up to you if you want to do the work or not but um, I'm gonna get that fixed so that I can can open your your stuff so packaging is not a problem that's compatible what's not compatible is the version of Adobe that I have versus the one you might have so if it's an older version or a newer version it can affect how it can be opened yeah Kat I'm getting there I'm showing you um, I'm just looking to see if assignment 2 is needs to be packaged the same way yeah packaged in design file okay so let me show you what you need to do So we're gonna to go to InDesign. Okay, ta-da, I'm done with my assignment. Now I need to package it. So I'm gonna to go to File, Export, and I need to make sure my format says PDF, Print, okay? This is where you'll give it a, a name. This is um, CD cover. Give it the proper name. It shows you how to save your assignment. I think it's Assignment to Instructor Woodland, um, Yada yada. Um, so CD cover, Adobe PDF, you're gonna hit save. Then this is where it's gonna ask you, okay, which pages do you want? Well, you're gonna specify, I want one to four, or you can do all. You have, for, for instance, I only designed on two through five, so I would go two through five, and that will be specific pages that I want printed, uh, or PDF, converted to PDF, or I can do all if you don't have any gaps in between. Um, marks and bleeds, you want to click on that, and that will give you crop marks, bleed marks, registration marks. This is more for the printer. It's not necessary, but I do, I do appreciate it. And then um, that's about all you need to worry about is the pages that you're going to be creating. So hit export, and I'll show you what it looks like. Let's do the desktop. So this is the first step, okay? The first step is creating the PDF. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> My million files here, let's see. You know what, I don't even know where it got saved to. Let's try it again. File, export, PDF. Um, I'm gonna save this to desktop. Okay, hit OK, export. Okay. 
Okay, and then it should pop up right here. What? Oh, there it is, okay. Okay, so here are my files right here. These are my printer marks, as you can see. So this is my PDF, all right? Now that that PDF is done, I'm gonna go back to InDesign and I'm going to click on File, Package. Do you see that? File, Package. Kat, can you see? Okay, so File, Package is what you need to do. This will give you a summary. If you see this exclamation mark, it means uh, links, images, um, things can't be found, so you need to go through and troubleshoot. Um, but if everything looks good, click on package. It says publication needs to be saved. Yes, save it, obviously. Save your work. Give it a name, TV cover. Um, follow the instructions on what to call it. I'm going to save it to a place that I know where to find it. And InDesign document, that's fine. Okay, save. This is where you can give instructions to your printer or um, if, you're, if you're sending it to print um, or if you need to provide your contact information, you can fill this out. This is not necessary, uh, but you will need to give it a file name. So to stay consistent, I'm just gonna type this. Hit continue. And then here's where you give it the name for your folder, okay? CD cover, looks good. Hit okay. And right now it's busy packaging all the links, all the pictures, the background, the text, the font. It's putting it in one nice little folder for us. Okay, and then I'll go find where I saved it, which is on my desktop. If I open this folder, what I'm gonna find is my InDesign file, it, my PDF, it actually creates a PDF. So, uh, Scratch creating the PDF, it already does that for you, so that's a nice time saver. It has all the fonts I'm using and the links, so um, you should have everything there. Okay, and this little text is where they had you fill in your information, so this comes in handy if you're sending to a printer, but in this case, it's not necessary to fill out. Are there any questions about this? I'll, I'll, um, I'll make sure to put that in the announcements, how to package it's the step-by-step -step instructions. And that should be it. Okay, and then Simon asked a question. Simon, your question is, is there a way to package backwards compatible to your version? Okay, so packaging isn't the problem. I can see your package materials. I can see the folder, especially, um, oh, and then let me show you one last thing. Once you have it packaged in this folder, you right click on it, click on compress, okay? So it packages that entire folder into this nice little zipped file. Inside the folder, there's a PDF, an InDesign file, and all my links and my pictures. I don't want to see you do a zipped InDesign file, a zipped PDF file, a zipped document folder file. I don't want to see four different zipped files. I just want to see one folder that's zipped, okay? Does that make sense? It's just too much to open and things can get lost and I'd rather it just packaged in one nice little little present for me to open. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so Simon, going back to your question, um, you can package and I can see your folder and I can see what's in it. I just can't necessarily open the InDesign file if your InDesign is a newer version than mine. So that's the problem I'm running into. I'm working with the uh, dean right now to get it, or the associate dean to get it fixed so that I can uh, see what you guys are doing. Not everyone has the newer version, but so I'm still able to open your, your stuff. Um, and then Kat, you asked, when is lab tomorrow? Same time, 6.30 to 8.30, that's Pacific Standard Time. Okay, so just adjust for whatever time zone you're in. If you don't know it, Google it. Um, I, think, I think that's everything. Come tomorrow with questions if you wanna work on assignment two stuff. If you want me to pre-grade something before you submit it, and if you want to get uh, make some corrections, we can go over your stuff. We'll just first come first serve. Whoever's there first gets is in line first, and we'll go that way. And I think that's 
that covers today's class. Any, any questions? Yeah, so Sherry, this, this recording today will be posted tomorrow by noon. So this recording will be posted on the YouTube channel tomorrow by noon. Um, hopefully it just takes all night to, it's such a large file and it goes so slow uploading, it takes all night. So I usually give myself some wiggle room, say by noon. Yeah, Kat, absolutely. Come tomorrow and we'll go over your last week's work. Absolutely. And if you can make the corrections in class, I can go ahead and change your grade on the spot. Okay. And then Sherry says in the announcements, the link. Yeah, in the announcements, um, there's a YouTube link. I'll, I'll, I usually post it every, every Tuesday morning. You'll see a new announcement for the, uh, for the recording. So just look, just keep an eye out for that so you guys can follow along. Great questions. I know everyone worked very hard and I'm very proud of you guys. Um, don't be discouraged if you see a low number on your grade. That's, that's not reflective of your hard work. We just want to make, there's a lot of fine tuning we have to do and a lot of um, sometimes just figuring out what, what's expected in class. And so we'll get that all ironed out. So don't worry, come and we'll, we'll get that grade adjusted once we can get the changes made, okay? Thanks guys so much for coming. Appreciate your participation. We'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow. All right, good night, guys. We'll see ya.